to see, I have my heart here being formed through the chain stitch. And we're just going to make single, single chains. And it's basically how you would end what the last stitch of a chain stitch would look like. So you drive your needle back into the same place the thread is coming out. So you're coming from the bottom to the top to start. And then I'm going to untangle this. Then you're going to go back into that same spot, drive your needle to where you want the chain to end. And we're going to go right there. And while the needle is still in the cloth, take your thread and wrap it around the end of the needle. I hope you can see that. Okay, let me do that again. So you're going to wrap it so that it comes up and around the point of the needle, just like that. Now you'll, I usually put my thumb on just to hold it kind of gently in place, then pull your thread through and to end the stitch, you want to be able to capture that thread. So you're going to skip over the thread, making a little bridge, and drive the needle back in to the underside. And there you have it. So you could fill in, you know, all kinds of shapes. Um, this in this one, you know, I just did a radial design, but I, I wasn't that pleased that I didn't have something about a heart in this one. So doing these other pieces has given me an opportunity to try to work the heart image in. Of course, there's lots of ways to do that. You could find little hearts, you could beat hearts in what's the negative space. So have fun with it and can't wait to see all these individual takes on the project. Thanks. Hi there. This is our last demo, our last lesson for the 2023 Norgard Designs iHeart Global, Global Project. And I'm hoping that you're all thinking that you'll join. We're going to be working with the final pieces with some wonderful folks from the fashion industry. Sabrina Gardner and Sachi Honda. If you've enjoyed learning about bead embroidery under Lucas Learns on my website, the website is www.norgard, that's N O R G A R D, designs. So, yes, there's two N's in there, dot com. And, uh, when you go to the learning section, you'll see a section on Lucas Learns. Lucas Learns is um, uh, an, an incredible resource, and you can download information from uh, the Lucas Learns area. We have a lesson on bead embroidery specifically. And of course, if you learn more things, you can incorporate more techniques into your final piece for iHeart. I also wanted to mention that on the International Bead Week website, they also have some great learning lessons and diagrams for um, creating various different um, stitches. What I'm going to do next is I'm first going to draw out what I call a stack stitch. So, let me square this. There we go. If we have the edge of your material here. So this is this is looking at your material from the side. And your needle is coming up like that. The needle adds on a stack of stitches. And those stacks can be absolutely anything you like. They could be a size 8 and a size 11 and a size 15. So the thread goes up through those, but when it comes back down, it skips the top one and follows back down. 
What's really fun about the stack stitch is you can stack anything. You could stack um, a large eight and then a bugle and then a, an 11 on top. And again, your thread would come up through the eight, the bugle. It goes through your uh, top bead, turns around and goes back down. I think this is easiest, um, it's easiest for me to explain this through a diagram. I've enjoyed working with this stitch with many students and several people call it something else. Diane Fitzgerald showed, showed me the term short fringe. Oh, it's a piece of short fringe. Uh, my students do enjoy the idea of stack because it gives you kind of a, um, a sense of other possibilities. So it could be uh, a, a bead here, and then one student did a bugle bead, a seed bead, a bugle bead, a seed bead, and a bugle bead. So have fun with it. Here, I'm gonna just bring in a little bit of what I've done on this piece. And when you look at it from the side, you can see the stacks more clearly. Here we have a bugle being used with seed beads on either end. Remember that if your bugles have a sharp end, you do wanna bookend them. Uh, so that the um, sharp end of the bugle doesn't break your thread. Here we have a, a larger bead and then three elevens. Turn around on that top eleven and go down. Okay. Well, that's it for now. I thank you. So much and hope that you'll join in and send us lots of eyes, eyes of loved ones, your own eye, eye that you were drawn to in a fashion magazine, anything that you would like to use. And remember, if you can't find those plastic cabochons, please have people post on our Facebook page called I Heart. And share where you're getting them. But you could also just take that piece of paper and glue it to the surface with a coating of glue underneath and a clear coating on top. Uh, and then go ahead and stitch right through that paper. Have fun and I'm looking forward to all of your entries. Bye for now.